you, Honorable Speaker. Um, Your Excellency, is this intervention just going to be limited to Banjul and the Greater Banjul area and uh, West Coast region? Uh, are you considering intervening in other parts of the country, for example, up country, where uh, those places that are affected by the flooding? Thank you. Yes, for this particular project, it will be in the Greater Banjul area. But that does not mean that the Office of the Vice President has neglected or you know, has oversighted the orders. We are in discussion with other development partners, trying to find a permanent solution to this perennial problem. Thank you very much. Uh, we now have the last one, Honorable Member for Lower Salon. Thank you, um, Your Excellency, um, for that brilliant accommodations. Um, how far with the negotiation of the World Bank on the project? How far? With the negotiation of the World Bank on, on this project? Well, I, as I said, we, you know, the negotiations start in December and the project starts in earnest in January. So you're looking at a space of about uh, a, month and a month and a half. If you take the whole of December and part of January. Thank you very much. Honorable members, we now go to question number 0115 of 2022, mem member for Brikama South. Thank you so much, Honorable uh, Speaker. Honorable Speaker, could His Excellency, the Vice President, update the August Assembly the status of the comprehensive study for proper drainage system he promised the Gambian upon visiting the victims of the recent heavy downpour of rains. Thank you very much. Honorable Speaker, the government can confirm that there exist two feasibility studies. One study for the banjul drainage and sewage done in 2015, and another one for the storm water and sewage systems for the greater banjul area done in 2014. Both studies have been submitted to the Ministry of Finance and is awaiting funding. The main issue with the drainage-related problems in Banjul is the presence of the solid waste that cause clock in drains and outfalls. To prevent this clocking and waste needs to be removed from the drains frequently, and a resolution of the present situation by the implementation of the emergency measures therefore requires urgent attention. Um, plans to resolve the issue include extending concrete drains into the uh, polder area and then building a ring channel for conve conveyance towards the bond road polder. Also, it is recommended that the pumping house structure itself be demolished and replaced with a much smaller pumping house. Thank you very much, Honorable Vice President. Honorable Member, no, any? Uh, thank you so much. Your Excellency, um, I don't know to what extent is uh, these studies involving the indigents with regards to their know-how about the drainage pattern and especially some areas that are prone to, uh, 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 they to flooding with existing reservoirs that exist. Are they consulted during the, the study? Well, um, given the timeline of 2014 and 15, I believe that the consultations must have been extensive. But that notwithstanding, just during the last um, two weeks when we had the retreat, we decided to revisit this and say that we'll go back to the drawing board because this was something like um, five, six years ago. So we need to update it. And in that update, we would be doing extensive and intensive consultations, not only with the stakeholders, but also with the indigents in that area who have a knowledge of the geography of that area and the, exper and the expertise or experience. Member for Bikama South, you have an order? Yes, Your Excellency, um, I don't know whether the issue, because I want to believe that especially in Bikama, most of these problems are design problems, the way the highways are constructed, covering certain altitude. 
with that drainage system. So they are therefore blocking the um, natural flow of water to the other side, which burns back and creates a lot of... Are you going to reconsider in, uh, in, in the design to factor drainage in those highways that are constructed without drainage? That is causing this problem. And probably an Irish crossing or exist to or a cold bath to allow the flow of the water to go to the other side of the road. Well, certainly when we come to do the design, I'm sure the experts will decide as appropriate after surveying the area, since they are with the experience, the expertise, and the pedigree. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Any member? Member for Latrikunda Sabiji. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Speaker, for giving me the floor, and uh, thank you, Vice President, for your attempt on this very important question. Uh, I don't know, uh, we, what we fail to understand, not all the flooding in this country is caused by lack of drainage facilities. I think the country needs to adopt to new technologies, uh, what we call groundwater harvesting and rainwater harvesting. I don't know whether you guys have uh, consulted any technicians with regard to that. Thank you very much. Well, as I said, these are international uh, funded projects, and certainly we'll have some consultants and that those people will be updated, I'm sure, in their knowledge as to what is the best way forward when they come to look at the topology of the area and the geography and how it impacts on, you know, um, disaster. And they will decide as appropriate. Honorable Member for Kian West. Thank you very much. Uh, His Excellency, the Vice President. Uh, uh, I want to look at this drainage system uh, around Talini and Buva zone down to Latrikunda. If you look at it, if it gets, um, uh, you, you get to uh, the end of uh, the German clinic, that's where it stops. So all those refuse and waters and everything that comes from the drainage will flow down to Pajikunda and another. And you find chicks, you know, playing in it during rainy week is also causing another harm, you know, on the kids and the society. I don't know what best is the, are uh, you guys doing to ensure that we have a complete drainage system from down to the road and to the river. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we are aware of these things and we need, we, we saw the need to have a permanent solution rather than just, I mean, having short-term interventions, especially during the rainy season uh, with food aid and that's it and it keeps repeating itself. Hence the retreat that we have, which has you know, I mean, policy segments. One, the strategy in the short term, the strategy in the medium term, and the strategy in the long term. In the medium to the long term, it will be an aerial survey of not only the greater Banjul area, but the entire country to map out the respective waterways that are, you know, have been blocked or that could cause, I mean, floods or whatever it is. And that is something that we will have a comprehensive project, or pro not project, but a program for that so that at least we discuss with the development partners and see how best they can index it into their budget to help us address this issue once and for all. And it could include not only dealing with I mean, the, the drainage and the culverts and all those things, but also those people who are in waterways, how do we have a resettlement program for them funded? Thank you very much. Honorable Member for Joshua. Thank you very much. Vice President, I mean, I think it is good to build drains. But my question is, after the drains, when the drains are already built, the end points of the drains are very important. What are your plans towards those end points? And number two, when drains are built... One, one, one question. Okay. Um, it is, of course... Um, the project does not terminate mid-air, or it does not abort mid-air. It goes to its logical conclusion, you know, from where it starts to where it ends, where it empties itself. So obviously, you know, we will take care of that. You know, that was what happened in Jamisa, and then we had the, the problem there. So these are lessons learned which will be in, factored in. And the other thing will... Honorable Member for Lower Salum. Thank you, um, Honorable Vice President. You have factored um, uh, on, the, on the project 
for consultancy, whether it's going to be a local one or international consultancy. Consultancy or international one. No, I think um, a, my philosophy is that you have a hybrid, and this is where you can transfer skills to the local ones so that you bring them up to the international standard. Hence, in the future, you don't have to outsource it. You do it, I mean, domestically. Honorable Member for Kantora. Thank you very much. Honorable Vice President, in the quest for addressing the issue of drainage, um, wouldn't you see it prudent to also look at the widening of the road to expand? Is it also part of your plan? Um, the, the task force to look at this is multifaceted, and uh, the Na National Road Authority plus the Appearing Ministry, the Minister of Transport, are all part of this. And I'm sure there are lessons learned in terms of road construction that are without some of these facilities so that at least in future, we are able to you know, address those kinds of things. Thank you, Your Excellency. Question number 0116 of 2022, member for Bikama South. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, could um, His Excellency the Vice President inform the August Assembly whether the President of the Republic would undertake to fulfill the promise he made during the fifth legislature for the restoration of the Birkama Street Lightning with CCTV camera and Wi-Fi and the art of the state hospital as he promised. Honorable Speaker, the Government of Qatar promised to support the Government of the Gambia to build the Birkama Hospital but the plans were derailed by the COVID-19 pandemic. However, a Qatari mission was recently in country and they expressed interest in funding the said project. The Qatari project got delayed. Government decided to include the Brikama Hospital in the World Bank funded I mean, essential health strengthening project, which is currently being implemented. And there is an allocation of 4 million US dollars to build a 200 bedroom uh, bed capacity in Brikama. The, the issues with the land allocation for the hospital with the Ministry of Regional Governments, Lands and Religious Affairs and the community of Brikama need to be sorted out. Regarding the Wi Fi and the CCTV for Brikama, there was an interested investor that actually started work. However, it turned out that his, I mean, their equipment was not compatible with that of Gamtel, and so the mission was abandoned. Thank you very much, Honorable Vice President. Uh, Honorable uh, Member. Your Excellency, the emphasis here is laid on the restoration of the street lighting. Uh, it was his gesture when he wanted to add the Wi-Fi and the CCTV camera. But now we want to forgo about that and let our street lights be restored, especially with the, that trapezium. And when you come to uh, the issue of um, the, the hospital, I vividly remember when the president came to uh, Burkama during the uh, 2018 uh, Meet the People tour. He was hosted in the southern part of Burkama, where we expressed certain major concerns. Notably among them are these two that I highlighted. And he promised with emphasis. He already spoke to the Saudis government initially that they are ready to come and construct the out of the state of hospital for us. So the issue of land was not a major problem. I don't know whether the indigenous of Burkama have been consulted, because I'm constantly in touch with the Council of Elders. If they are ready, I think we should be able to provide the land for this hospital. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think the, the source of funding has shifted. As I said, um, the World Bank is now going to do it. But um, on the ground, my information is that the issue of land is still a problem. You know? And for the, for the street lights, government is committed to providing the street lights. That one is a firm commitment. Your Excellency, I think from 2018 to date, it has been long overdue. And I don't know whether the sixth legislative will also escape without 
the restoration of the street lighting. So when you come, when you, yes, I wanted, if there could be a timeline. Honorable member, can, you give us the timeline question. when it's. Honorable member, post your question. No, I'm posting my question. I want him to understand the build up. What I'm saying, can you give us the time frame when are we going to get the still lighting? Two, when you come to the consultation, would you Honorable member, that? you can only put one question at a time. Okay. No, I cannot give a definitive timeline because this is a World Bank project and the World Bank, they have their rules and regulations when it comes to negotiations and when the project would be effective. And we don't have a control over that. A any honorable speaker, any supplementary? Honorable speaker, point of order. Who is that? A member for Woolley East? Honorable speaker, point of order. Member for Lower Jumi. Honorable Speaker, Please. point of order. This Sorry. is a reminder to honorable members standing on order 43, clause 3. The time taken to ask a supplementary question shall be no longer than one minute. An answer to a supplementary question shall not be no, shall not, shall not be no longer than two minutes. It seems that the, the members are exceeding the time of asking this supplementary question. Thank you. Thank you very much, honorable member. Members are fully reminded now. Uh, any more supplementary question, honorable members? Woolley East, member for Woolley East. Yes, uh, thank you very much, honorable speaker. Uh, honorable vice president, uh, the question is more emphasis, emphasis on the street lights, street lighting system and the CCTV. So do you have any comprehensive plan? Do you have any project plan before you even get to the World Bank? Is, is anything actually comprehensively uh, uh, put in place for, for this? Uh, as I told him that the building of the street lights will be done, and uh, it will be in consultation, of course, with the Brikama Area Council, I mean, people, in order to ensure the mapping and all those things. Certainly, yes, you know, we are in consultation and we will come to a definitive conclusion when we exhaust the, the, the dialogue. Member, Honorable Member for Sami. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Thank you very much, Honorable Vice President. This said hospital in Brikama, when are you going to start the construction? As I said, um, this uh, is being funded by the World Bank. The World Bank has its um, procedures, um, and I know the procedures very well because I work for that institution for 12 years. It's not something that, I mean, it's instant. It's not like instant coffee. It's a process. So, you know, I mean, we will be able to know that when, after the negotiations, we would know when effectiveness would take place because there are certain conditions, precedents, for effectiveness, which we need to fulfill. Honorable Member for Latrikunda Sabiji. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor, and thank you, Vice President, uh, for, your, for your answers. I just want to make uh, the government to be very wise in managing land as far as project interventions is con uh, concerned. If you go to Brigham, they have existing... Uh, Honorable Member, you are not to make a statement. No, okay, are... let me ask a question now. Can the government... When I, when I take the floor, you sit down and listen. You are to make a supplementary question and not to tell them what to do. Honorable Vice President, uh, if you go to Brikam Arena, they have existing health structure there. I, I probably the project can go up. It's not all about we go spiral sometimes. We can build story buildings to, uh, to occupy this hospital instead of, instead of uh, occupying another big hectares of land. Thank you very much. Honorable Member, what is your question? My, my question is whether the government has any plan instead of uh, acquiring another new plot of uh, land for this project intervention to use the existing facility for the project. That's my question. Thank you. No, um, uh, there are certain conditions attached. We cannot use an existing project and go longitudinally. So it has to be a different site. Honorable Member for Kiang East. 
um, my question pertains to the Wi-Fi wi -Fi for Brikama that the uh, Vice President said was abandoned because of the incompatibility of the equipment of an interested uh, in, in investor and the equipment for Gamtel. Uh, aren't you thinking about uh, outsourcing another investor so that this Wi-Fi project is not left, uh, is not left entirely like that? No, it is not on our cards to start engaging another investor for the time being. It might be in the medium to the long term future, but for now, for the immediate one, no. I mean, the immediate uh, priority is the hospital and the street lights. Honorable member for Bikamal North. Pardon? Yeah, you passed it. Okay. Honorable. On, on, we now move to question number 0117 of 2022, member for Bacau. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, could the Vice President tell this August Assembly if there are any plans to refurbish state-owned buildings in Bacau for use as accommodation? for government guests instead using expensive hotels? Yes, there are plans to cover the, the two state house, the one close to the Bacau market and the one where the vice president used to stay. So those two will be, you know, refurbished and brought to, and furnished and brought to standard so that when um, dignitaries come, they can occupy those things which would help government save money. You talk of only two state houses, but there are other government buildings that are not part of the state house. How about those ones? The intention is there, but the resources are not there. So we will concentrate our delimited resources on those two for the time being. Any order? No, no, no. You won't see it. Member for Janjambure. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker. Um, my question is, um, why is the Vice President not occupying the state, um, the said state house at Bacau? That's not a supplementary question. But it emerged from his response, please. That is not a supplementary question. But it emerged from his answer. Honorable Member, sit down, please. Any other supplementary question? Fonyi Bintang. Thank you so very much. Vice President, is there any plan for you to generate fund? Because you say there is no fund. What are the plans that you have put in place to generate fund? As I ask, thank you. Um, the government is in the process of um, redoing the, end, the national development plan. And uh, it will be indexed into that in term, uh, relative to resource mobilization when we have the round tables and the other kinds of consultations to attract funds. Honorable Member for Opanyomi. Honorable Speaker, I withdraw. Thank you very much. Question number 0118 of 2022, member for Fonyi Kansala. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, could, the, could His Excellency, the President, uh, the Vice President, inform this August Assembly? Uh, when would the Commission of, of when would the President commission an investigation into the financial activities of Minister of Health and Works, Transport and Infrastructure in relation to the expenditure of COVID-19 funds and the Banjun Rehabilitation Project? Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, both the COVID-19 funds and the Banjun Road Project were audited. 
audit queries were raised and recommendations made. The audit recommendations are being currently implemented by government, so there is no need for, it, for the President to commission an investigation. No supplementary? Yes, please. please. Uh, thank you. Uh, I... When the, uh, the Vice President answers your question, you can just raise, rise up and then ask your supplementary question. Uh, thank you. Uh, Honorable Vice President, uh, can you uh, help us the total revenue uh, of uh, the COVID-19 funds generated so far? That is substantive, my, uh, uh, you know. I'm not hearing it. Any more question? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. In the Banjun Rehabilitation uh, Project, uh, can you tell us uh, who the main project uh, uh, consultant was, uh, the name of uh, the consultant of the Banjun Rehabilitation Project? I said the contractor, the contractor of the project. Who was he contracted to? Honorable member, I don't know what is the problem. You wanted, you wanted a commission of inquiry on a project that you had researched and believed that there were, it would, there were fraudulent activities. Yes. And it, you have been told that, that the accounts have been audited and government is looking into the audit queries and putting in measures to at least avoid or prevent or correct whatever may, might have been going wrong. You're now talking about the contract. Noted, noted, noted. <laughs> we have member for Latikunda Sabeji. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rabbi Speaker, for giving me the floor. And thank you very much, Honorable Vice President. You said the government has started uh, imp implementing the audit report. And I'm very sure this implementation is a process. How far are you guys in the implementation process? Well, I think um, in quantitative terms, certain things are not measurable. But I'm sure it is a comprehensive implementation of the recommendations. It cannot be measured in Honorable percentages member for Kiang, or Kiang West. His Excellency the Vice President, I, I, I would like to know if there are still funds that the government is spending on COVID-19 because the Honorable Minister rightly stated that COVID-19 is still with us and uh, they are receiving cases and uh, people are affected with it. Thank you very much. It's a substantive question. Well, if you, if you want, you can, pull, you can put a question for that and it will be answered. Hon Honorable Member for Talinding, Kunja. Come on. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Your, Your Excellency, with regards to the, the first question uh, on Banju Road and rehabilitation, uh, could your office confirm to this August Assembly if the government is in, constant, in custody of the contract document, because the contract did mention that the gov, the, even the president did not see the contract document. Point of order. Can we hear the point of order? No. I withdraw. Uh, Honorable Speaker, point of order, please. Honorable Speaker, point of order. Cantora, member yes. of Cantora? Yeah, uh, just to make some um, clarity here, I'm raising a point of order for the three sub clause one. Supplementary questions may be put for the purpose of elucidating on an oral answer. So if you are really asking supplementary question, it must relate to the minister's oral answer given to you for further elucidation or clarity on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable member for Cantora and majority leader. Honorable member for Talindi, can we hear you again? He withdrew. I did not. Uh, uh, 
the, 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 the first question is alluding to investigations and other things. And then my supplementary is regarding the same matter. So it's in line. Because it's, it talks about the... Honorable member. So my question, Honorable my question member. is... Honorable member. Yes. Nobody told you you are offline. I said, uh, okay. repeat your question. No, I'm, okay. Thank you, your, your honorable, uh, honorable speaker. My question is, with regard to the, uh, this thing, uh, could, the, could, the, could his excellency, the vice president, confirm if the government is in custody of the contract document for the Banjul rehabilitation project? <laughs> Yes, Honorable yes, member, yes. you are just told that the accounts have been audited. How can you audit an account based on what without the necessary documentations and all this? Honorable Minister, can you just clear that here? Um, I think the, the contract was awarded by the government. So it is just obvious that the government would be in custody of the contractual document because it is, you know, a contract between the government and uh, whoever is the con whoever the contractor is. So um, that is, as Fibonacci said, in plain sight. Indeed, honourable member. Point of order, would, honourable would, speaker. Point of order. Point. Point of order. Can yes. you hear the point of order, please? When we start uh, our assembly business, we always skip a very important point, that is administration of oaths. I think this event is so important that we have to administer ministers are uh, giving us their, 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 their answers. Can you call the relevant standing order? Uh, 14 paragraph A. The business at each sitting shall be transacted in the following order administration of oaths. We jump that and we do communication from the chair. We also do communication from the... Okay, that's not there. We also went up to correction and approval of record of votes and... Honorable so member, you skip, are... Honorable member... Um, we skip this important... Honorable point. member, sit down, please. When I take the floor, sit down. You missed, you missed everything up. <laughs> that is the order of business. It does not necessarily follow that members coming, people coming here are going to take an oath. It's learning. There are times when taking an oath is done in the assembly. When you were speaking, you never took an oath again. <laughs> honorable members, we now invite the member, the honorable for Woolley East. Yes, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, two ministries are mentioned in this question. That is the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Works. So my question is the, the audit queries that were raised, is it raised on the two ministries or is it just one? And if it is one, which one? Um, I guess the COVID-19 funds are under the Ministry of Health and the Banjul project is under the Ministry of Works. So the audit report obviously covered both, I mean, projects, you know, and respectively the Ministry of Health and Works. Honorable member for Banjul Central. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Your Excellency, as pertaining to the audit queries that you've highlighted from uh, pertaining to the COVID-19 funds and that of the Banyu Rehabilitation Project. Um, it's obvious that it's a query and you've made mention that the government is looking into these things. So my question is, um, if at all um, uh, upon findings of uh, misdemeanors or deficits or lapses within, uh, is the government ready to put due diligence to these, uh, these queries? That's my question. Thank you. Um, Honorable Minister, as I, I'm sorry, Honorable Speaker, as I said, we are implementing this, and uh, I'm sure if and when we come across those things, the government has the courage of its own convictions. Uh, 
Honorable members, we now move to question number 0119 of 2022, member for Upper Salo. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the government of the Gambia pays millions of dollars on rental properties on a yearly basis. Could the Vice President tell this August Assembly if there are plans to use unoccupied government properties in the Greater Banjul area to cut down expenditure on rent? On, uh, I, I, I tend to believe that the Vice President may not see the answer, because even on, my, on our records, question number 0119 of 2022 is missing on the seat where answers are provided. It is only stated on, this, on, the, on the documents of your questions. So it will seem as that question, if the Vice could not find it, it means something must have happened, and we will have to take note, and then we pose the question again. Oh, Honourable Speaker. Events. Honourable Speaker. Yes. Member. Oh, yes, Upper Salo. Yes. Um, thank you, um, Honourable Speaker. With your kind permission, I would like to withdraw this question, um, uh, so that I can pose the question again. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, because the question is, in fact, similar to the previous question as regards government properties. That was specific to Bacau. Thank you very much. Uh, we now move to question number 0120 of 2022, member for Upper Salum again. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, would the Vice President confirm to this August Assembly if the government has identified and protected key national infrastructure? Thank you very much. Honorable Speaker, before answering this question, we were in consultation with the Honorable Member, because when you say national infrastructure, it could be roads, it could be buildings, it could be I mean, IT infrastructure and so on for clarification. And it is on the basis of that clarification we forward this answer. Honorable Speaker, the government is aware of the security risks to key institutions such as the Central Bank, Gamtel, Gamsel, Navec, as well as vital systems and services such as the IFMIS, banking networks, and the internet landing sites. Adequate physical security is in place for all these vital government infrastructure and services. With regard to cybersecurity, Cybersecurity is relatively new here, and so when the Information and Communications Act of 2009 was being formulated, it took only into con context computer misuse and cybercrime. Currently, legislation of the IC Act has, has provision to combat cybercrime and speci specifies what constitutes an offense and the corresponding penal I mean, penalties. However, procedural matters involving evidence gathering and handling as well as investigations were not detailed. Due to these reasons, government through the Ministry of um, Communications and Digital Economy acted swiftly to make the IC acts more comprehensive by conducting a review to incorporate cybersecurity provisions while specifying critical information infrastructure protection. Cybersecurity legislations as well as the provide, I mean, to provide the mandate to the Gambia's Computer Security Response Team on the PURA for cyber threat intelligence gathering and alerting its constituencies. Other activities being embarked on include the formulation of a holistic cybercrime bill which is in Cabinet awaiting endorsement. As part of the IC Act review, the draft has been submitted to the Ministry of Digital Economy and is awaiting stakeholder comments. As a national, as also a national security 
um, cybersecurity policy has been validated and submitted to cabinet for endorsement. The vision of this policy is to ensure one, the Gambia with a secure, resilient, and trusted cyberspace for enhanced inclusive socioeconomic development. Specifically, for the IFMIS, there is data encryption between the routers of the sites as the data moves from the sectors to the Accountant General's Department. This provides cyber protection known as the man in the middle level attacks. The system uses an encrypted virtual private network VPN for all users connected from the internet like the embassies. Such sub, I mean, sub treasuries and uh, subvented institutions. This service is provided by a firewall that is positioned between the internet and the IFMIS network. There is also a disaster recovery site in the Combos, which provide backup in, in case of a disaster like fire at the primary site, which is at the AGD office in Banjul, so that government business can continue without much interruption. For the central bank, there is a virtual private network in place to deny unauthorized access to the central bank network and system. Additional networks diagnosis tools, such as solar winds together with the fireworks, fireball, uh, firewalls are deployed to protect the system. Cognizant of the rise and sophistication of attacks, the bank has embarked on the modernization of its ICT infrastructure which includes enhanced cybersecurity service tailored to monitor, detect, and prevent cyber crimes. This enables the bank to take quick and efficient measures to handle incidents efficiently and build additional resilience into the ICT infrastructure. If you have supplementary, immediately he finishes, you can just rise to ask your supplementary. If you sit down, it denotes that you don't have supplementary and we move to the orders. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. And uh, thank you, Vice President, for that in-depth um, answer to the question. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Now, um, would you consider um, creating a policy that would also help you to guide and identify such infrastructure, not only in the government side, but also in the private sector? because the two actually can form a very um, formidable force in terms of um, infrastructure that will make this country to work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, the, the logic of interest dictates that we do that. We consider that unfactorated. Any other member? No. We now move to question number 0121 of 2022. Say member for Lower Salm. This I have Lower Salm. Yes, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Um, Honorable Speaker, could His Excellency the Vice President tell this August? Assembly about the efforts of the National Disaster Management Agency on the recent flood. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. When the floods happen, the President of the Republic of the Gambia and the Vice President visited communities and engaged with affected population. The Vice President convened an emergency meeting that set out of the following actions, and he continues to give strategic guidance to the NDMA and the partners engaged in the response effort. Responses to the disaster so far include the following. Procurement of food items, 850 bags of sugar, 850 drums of oil, 20 liters of cooking oil, and 1,500 bags of rice, 50 kilo, worth 6 million for the affected population across the country. Partners support with non-food items such as tents and bed nets 
which have been distributed to the affected population. Relocation of severely affected households and provision of temporary accommodation to internally displaced population within the Greater Banjul area. Provision of various household items such as mattresses, fans, nets to the victims. Provision of medical support to the internally displaced population. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Honorable Vice President. I must also commend you, you and the, Vice, um, the President and the other um, members of the National Assembly. Um, we have been seeing you um, entering in the, in the huge amount of water. So, uh, um, a supplementary question, Honorable Member? Yes, I am, I am coming up because um, he did something that is commendable that we have to say. Yes, the reason why I come with this um, correction just to um, make things um, happen. Honorable so Member, do you have a supplementary question? If, there, if we don't have supplementary questions, any more supplementary questions? Of course, I have it. Um, thank you. Um, how this um, um, response um, we are distributed to the affected families. I don't understand the Did you say? You list um, an amount of items, rice, gallons, mattresses. How, how are they distributed to the affected families? Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, some of them were direct distribution. Others were sent to the regional I mean, governor's offices for distribution. Yes, um, Honorable Vice President. In lower asylum, there are affected families who doesn't. Yes, in my constituency, there are people who are affected, and and there was no response um, to those people or those affected victims. I will check with the appropriate authorities why that was not done, and if it was not done, I will ensure that it is done. Honorable Member for Bundum. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, thank you very much, um, His Excellency Vice President, um, for coming up with uh, a permanent solution as far as float is concerned. Uh, notwithstanding, I want, to, I want you to inform the August body the temporal solution uh, on float, because right now um, the, the permanent solution is coming. But what I want to be whether there is any contingency in place so that before the completion or the implementation of the project, whether there is any contingency that can mitigate flood. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, we dealt with um, the ones that happened the past few weeks, and uh, we hope and pray that we don't have something like that. But in case it will follow a, uh, it will follow a similar pattern you know, for the time being, until we put our acts in order and deal with them comprehensively. Honorable Member for Fonyi Kansala. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vice President. Uh, what uh, causes always the delay response uh, from the NDMA side in terms of uh, disasters? Well, I, I don't, I don't con uh, thank you very much. I don't consider it delayed. Um, in, you must have a rational step. Something cannot happen and you just jump into it without knowing the head and the tail. So one, we, they, they need to assess the impacts of uh, the disaster. Secondly, who are the target groups? And thirdly, determine what type of aid that would come. And that takes time. It's not just like you do it now and you act now and you, 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 it will be irresponsible for any institution to act like that. It must I mean, rational, take a rational step in order to do the proper assessment and then know what the needs are and how to address them and then take the appropriate measures to address them. Honorable Member for Fonyi Jarol. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I just want to find out whether there is any emergency fund either created or kept by the director or the minister for immediate response to emergency situations. As there is always a delay in response. Honorable member, the delay to the response 
he just even if there is, he said he, they have to do a lot of logistical and other these things, investigations, find out before they can act. He I'm has, not asking whether there is an emergency fund because if there is no emergency fund, I don't think they will be able to respond on time. Honourable Speaker, the answer is yes. Uh, Honourable Member for Banjul North. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Your Excellency, I just want you to update us on um, is there any plan in terms of supporting the affected families um, during the recent flash flood in Banjul that are currently at the Friendship Ho Hostel. Because I was told that they were asked to vacate the place before Friday. Thank you. Um, yes, um, they were moved to Friendship Hostel. And then the government provided lunch, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I think perhaps uh, they became so comfortable, they invited some of the, their families outside, and we have increased numbers. Then we gave them um, a notice to vacate, and they said that we should pay their rent three months earlier. Some of them lived in Tobacco Road, and we realized that they owe the landlord rent areas, and they know they cannot pay. So we told them to go back. They said no. They want to go back somewhere else, but we should give them three months rent. Knowing Then when we investigated further, we realized that the places they wanted to go, those people have asked for three months rent deposits. And I don't think it is a government's mandate to do that. But in the end, um, His Excellency the President decided that we'll give the 11 families there each 10,000 and then they have to vacate the area because I mean they are not it's not going to be permanent it was just temporary. Honorable Member for Upper Fuladu West. Yes um, thank you so much um, Honorable Speaker. Uh, my supplementary question that I want to ask the Vice President, uh, do the government of the day have any plan to relocate those inhabitants who are living within the floors areas? Yes, we have plans. I am not sure whether I forgot to indicate that, but as I said during the retreat, we had medium to long-term plans, and uh, there is um, provision in the, in the plan to relocate and resettle, where government would have the layouts for them in, on high ground and move them there. And where it involves compensation, we'll take care of it. You know? So there are plans to do that. Honorable members, we now move to question number 122 of 2022. Member for Serekunda West. I will speak. Uh... Could the Vice President inform this August Assembly the extent of the devastation caused by the current floods across the country, relief given to victims, and plans to mitigate the effects of floods in the future? Honorable Speaker, as of Wednesday, 7th September 2022, a total of 4,811 households with a population of 56,624 people were affected by the disaster. In total, 13 people lost their lives. Damage caused by the flooding included damage to houses and properties. Two. As previously mentioned, government purchased rice, sugar, and oil worth six million, which has been distributed across the country. Three, unconditional cash transfers by the National Disaster Management Agency and funded by the World, Bank, World Food Program is ongoing across the country. The activity is targeting 5,460 most vulnerable household victims across the country. 
Each household is entitled for two, um, to 2,350 monthly for a period of three months. The government is currently de developing a national disaster management policy strategy and an action plan which will build the resilience of the country to disasters by ensuring that it has the requisite capacity to prepare for, respond to, and recover from disasters. Thank you. From the Honorable Member. We have a member for Latikunda Sabegi. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor, and thank you, Vice President. Uh, when disaster hits, the first thing we do is to collect the data. The last time it happens, I went to disaster management. They said uh, they, all their vehicles uh, were not in order. So I don't know whether your office has any plan uh, to, 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 to provide them, uh, to make them resourceful. Um, that did not come to, the, to my notice, and certainly um, I went round with them the first, I mean, uh, very day that these, these things happened, and that they responded, but without telling me that they have some logistical issues. But if they do, I expect the managing director to come to the office, and we see how best we can address that. I want you to observe, please. Who is, who is saying observation? Yes, Honorable hmm? Member of Lower Salo. Lower Salo? Yes. Yeah, you want to observe what? Yes, um, the same questions which I raised and the same question with um, the member for Serebunda, and the, the same answer that the device is giving. I'm not hearing you. What I'm saying here is my questions to the vice president about this flood is the same the member for Serebunda also asked, and it is the same response that the vice also is giving. Why not we, we go for another question? Honorable member for Joshua? No, it's the same question. Honorable member for Joshua. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Your Excellency, what are your plans with regards to most of this block waterways? that caused most of the disaster, especially within my constituency. Thank you. Vice, well, before you answer, honorable members, majority leader and member for Kantora reminded us of the provisions regarding supplementary questions. Let every member note it down or make reference to you. I don't want to put members off. We make sure we are online. Your Excellency, you can go ahead. I think I outlined the, the generic nature of floods in this country and, of course, a holistic plan to address, I mean, those uh, uh, hopefully in future, you know, and uh, Joe Swang will not be an exception to, to that. Honorable Member for Kiang West. Your Excellency is Vice President. Uh, you've indicated that uh, the World Bank uh, funded project to respond to uh, uh, affected uh, uh, the disaster flood. Uh, there is a monthly disposal of uh, three, uh, 2,000 plus, if I am right, uh, to number of households. So I don't know how much is the total cost of the project because it's lasting for three months. Thank you very much. Um, it is not every three months. Uh, what I said was they will help them for three months, and then the project stops. You know, it's not for every three months. Honorable, uh, honorable member for Lower Salu. Honorable member for Tumana. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Uh, I want to ask if the Honorable, if the government of the Gambia have any plan to partner with the NAMS through NDMA uh, on the issues of disaster as these victims are looking directly to us. Yes. Thank you. 
Right. Honourable Speaker. Yeah. Okay. Honourable Member, you have a right to ask your questions, substantive questions, to the Minister. We are regulated by our own regulations that supplementary questions must be informed by the answers given to the you. You cannot bring in something new into supplementary questions. Please, let's take note of that. Member for Holy East. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, could the Honorable Vice President uh, please explain to us uh, what method is utilized to determine, uh, to determine the compensation given to a victim? If a victim, uh, one victim has uh, a cement block house, line house, you know, devastated, and another victim has a, a hut, how do you determine the, the, the compensation? For example, because I hear you are giving 10,000 to each, are they of the same? Well, I mean, I think you, in a way, answered the question because there's differential um, a disaster. One is mud block, and the other one is, I mean, cement block, and so on. So obviously, there will be differential response. It cannot be on the same playing field. That will not be social justice. Honorable members, we now move to question number 0123 of 2022. I give the floor to the honorable member for Sabak Sanjal. Thank you, honorable speaker, for giving me the floor. Honorable speaker, could His Excellency, the Vice President, inform this August Assembly of Government's strategic plan to minimize the high unemployment rate. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, the government has formulated a new national employment policy and an action plan 2022 to 2026. And it has mainly, its main objective is to create more gainful and decent employment opportunities for the growing labor force particularly the young people and women. The target is to create up to 1,050 jobs over a period of five years. Also, government has developed a major strategic plan to mitigate unemployment rates in the country and promote decent work by reviewing and repealing the Labor Act 2027 as some aspects of the Act are outdated and no longer address the emerging challenges in the labor market. In addition, a new Labor Bill 2020, 2020, which aims to provide for the administration, recruitment, and hiring of labor, protection of wages, and registration of employers, organizations, trade unions, and other matters connected therein, is in place. Under the new bill, the scope and the implementation of the expatriate quota system has been strengthened and businesses will no longer be able to employ foreign workers except where such expertise does not exist in the Gambia. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Vice President, for that answer. I think you've answered my question. I don't have any supplementary question. Thank you very much. Any member for Nyani? Thank you very much, uh, Speaker, for giving me the floor. Honorable Speaker, could the Vice President, His Excellency, inform this August Assembly on what plans do the government have in restoring the GPMB rice processing factory in Kuntawur? so as to promote employment opportunity for the youth around hey. the end. What is happening? <laughs> Honorable Member, we are on supplementary questions. Okay, I have on, on the question by the Honorable Member for Sabak Sanjar. So, we have other members who may want to 
who have supplementary questions who will ask. We have member for Fonyi Bintang. Thank you so very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, the Vice President. The Vice President, you spoke of policies and strategies, and the member is asking for implementation. How soon do you want to implement these things? Ah, sorry, observation, point of observation. Impl implement what thing? The, uh, observation, no, wait, the, no, but wait, let, let you are observing, wait. No, I, because you are misquoting me. I did not okay. ask for implementation. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay, I said correct, government's strategic plan to minimize the high unemployment rate. Not implementation, please. Thank you. But, uh, my, my, my honorable member, you never asked the question. If you want to ask your question, you can ask your supplementary. Don't attribute it to somebody. The, the questioner himself said he is satisfied with the answer. Who are you to say no, he is not satisfied? Honorable Member for Busumbala. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, and thank you very much, uh, the Vice President, for appearing before us. Uh, my question will be, you did make mention of the minimum wage being captured uh, in the new labor act. Can we have an idea or enlighten us about how much are we talking about here? Thank you. Um, I think it would be it's the labor bill that will come before you, and then you will have to confirm that given the proposal there. <laughs> Honorable Member for Cantora. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor, and thank you, Excellency, for providing these answers. You did mention in your utterances or response that you will be um, providing 1,050 jobs. Um, would this job um, available to be cross cotton across all regions, or is it considered in the area? Honorable Member, is it 1,050 or 150,000? I have on my records, the target is to create up to 150,000 jobs over a period of five years. Is it error, error? Pardon? Well, um, uh, my, my error then, but what is here is 150,000. I'm sorry about that. Yes, this is what I have. Mia Kolpa, Mia Maxima Kolpa. We now have a member for Banjul Central. Responding to my question. Yes, yeah, it's responding to my question. Yeah, thank you. Of course, it will be across the country, not only one region. Uh, thank you, Member Speaker. for Banjul Central. Yes, uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Your Excellency, um, with regards to the government strategic plan, which is really welcome in minimizing the high un unemployment rate. Um, is there within the strategic plan a special cater for those that have been repatriated uh, from uh, the Western countries, uh, namely the Bakwe people? Obviously, it's a, it is an all-inclusive strategy, so they will not be left out. Honorable members, question number 0124 of 2022. Member for Sabak Sanja. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker, once again for giving me the floor. Honorable Speaker, could His Excellency, the Vice President, inform this Assembly where the government would consider facilitating voting of Gambians abroad in the next election cycle? Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. The government of the Gambia is willing and committed to facilitating Gambians in the diaspora to vote in elections and consultations and engagement between the government and all relevant stakeholders started and will continue. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation and Gambians Abroad, the Ministry of Justice will soon restart the engagement with all the relevant stakeholders, particularly the diaspora representatives the Independent Electoral Commission, 
and the National Assembly to find solutions to the hurdles impending the, operation, the operationalization of the diaspora voting and representation. Um, once again, thank you, Your Excellency, for that honest answer. Um, as I stated before, um, I have no supplementary questions with regards to that. Thank you. Member for Bikama South. Um, thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, I think this issue of diaspora voting is captured in the election bill that is before the parliament here. Uh, I don't know whether your office or the government is looking in retabling it for us to, ex um, to work on the process so that the next cycle of election, uh, these uh, people can take part in our election. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Can the Honorable Member enlighten me because he said the bill is here. Um, so is it here or is it with us? No, it's still with the, uh, it, it was stable in the fifth legislature and we've done all the consultation, it's about to report to the plenary and unfortunately uh, it was overtaken by the presidential election and it was not table, it's still here. So I don't know whether you point, are... Point, point of order, um, point of order, Honorable Speaker. Can we hear the point of order? Yes, I'm rising on order 32. Um, uh, um, 33, that is anticipation. It shall be out of order to anticipate the discussion of a bill um, which is before the assembly by discussing the subject matter on that bill. So we cannot discuss it because it's already, it's already with us. So now it's us for us to do our, 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 our work, not, not them. Uh, Honorable Speaker, um, I want to make sure. So you wait for the ruling. Okay, okay. A bill with the assembly cannot be here for discussion. Have you heard that? If the bill is with the assembly, you don't ask others about the bill. Is Shani mentoring? Shani mentoring? He's withdrawn. Honorable, Honorable Speaker, I have withdrawn my statement, my question. It has been answered since the bill is in the parliament. Thank you very much. Honorable members, uh, we've come to the end of the questions for His Excellency the Vice President. Uh, Your Excellency the Vice President, thank you very much for ably answering thank questions. You. Of thank you very members. much. We will now invite Order questions, order 36 and 41. Question by the Minister for Agriculture. Honorable Minister of Agriculture. Hmm? Yeah, but, um, okay. Honorable members, let me welcome the Honorable Minister for Agriculture. Uh, we, we move to question number 075 of 2022. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. 
uh, by, by the Honorable Member for Kiang Central. Kiang Central. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, vegetable, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. Vegetable gardening contribute immensely to the socio-economic development of, num of a number of women within Kiang Central. Um, sorry, may I please start again? Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Vegetable gardening contribute immensely to the socio-economic development of a good number of women within the Kiang Central constituency. Uh, currently, they are faced with numerous constraints such as lack of water, market poor road networks, and animal intrusions due to improper fencing. Could the Honorable Minister for Agriculture tell these August gatherings what plan his ministry has towards addressing these constraints continuously faced by these women gardeners in Kiang Central? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and thank you to all the Honorable Members in the House. Um, thanks to His Excellency, the Vice President and Cabinet colleagues, and thank you to both the Minority and Majority Leader and our Chief Whip. Honorable uh, Member for Kiang Central, I would be happy to inform this Honorable Member that under my ministry, there are two projects namely the Roots and the Giraffe Project, which are supporting vegetable gardens throughout the country. As we speak, the Roots Project, which is a demand-driven project, is currently receiving requests for assistance from vegetable gardeners, of which villages in the LRR are of the request. Under the Giraffe Project, a massive sensitization was conducted throughout the country, and currently, a reconnaissance survey to determine the suitability of sites in terms of soil meant for vegetable production is ongoing. However, in Kiang Central itself, um, Sibito, which is a village located in your constituency, is a beneficiary of the, one of the gardens from one of the projects as we spoke earlier. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary, it means. Thank you. Uh, I think you have answered my question well. Thank you. Thank any any member who has supplementary questions? Member for Lower Nyomi. Is it Upper Nyomi? Lower Nyomi is on first. Then Upper Nyomi you can follow. Honorable Speaker. I want to ask the Honorable Minister, relating the same question, the same question is affecting my constituency. Um, is these projects only... Honorable the Member, the question relates to Kiang, Kiang Central. The okay. answer is specific, the question is specific to Kiang Central. It's not a generalized question. Thank you. And the response? Or you pose a substantive question for your constituency. Thank you. Honorable Member for Opanyumi. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Honorable Minister, site has been identified. And in this particular constituency, Sibito, excuse me. But like we were told that by the region director of the of agriculture at LRR, that when they did their survey and site selection, the villages they listed and submitted to the project coordinator unit, they come up with their own special list, and they, even the list they have provided for them, those villages were not found. Were you aware? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, uh, Honorable, for Open Yomi. Um, what I am aware of is there is a list 
of 40 gardens, 20 youth-led and 20 women-led, and the list is with us. And I mentioned specifically um, Sibito because the question did ask for Sibito, and I made sure that I, I ensured that Sibito was captured. However, the sites that were identified have not changed as far as we know, and, and they remain so. There are 20 sites for women-led and 20 sites for youth-led. Honorable Member for Sunny Mentoring. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Um, Honorable Speaker, um, I want to ask the Honorable Minister if there are any measures put in place to um, allocate coal stores for women for their products in order for them to enjoy the benefit of the gardening. And then also, um, if there is any possibility um, that they can also create the international market for them for some of their products. Thank you. Just one. Okay, combine this combination. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, for, um, Member for Sane Mentoring. Yes, I think we said this um, in our previous deliberation that our roots project would be building 15 cold store facilities nationwide and three are being built currently in 2022 in Soma, Basse, and Wazoo. So the 15 will be nationwide, and that is going to help mitigate post-harvest loss, especially for the women gardeners. And that aside, we also mentioned about the construction of two agrology centers. And these agrology centers will be one-stop shops, and storage facilities are part of the agrology centers, all geared towards mitigating uh, post harvest loss for vegetable gardeners. Thank you. Honorable Member for Iliasa. Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. I withdraw my question. Honorable Member, thank you, Honorable Member for Iliasa. Honorable Member for Sami. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. She has already addressed my question. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Sami. Honorable Members, we now move to Question. Mine. Mine. Minority leader, you can come up. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Minister, the numerous constraints faced by the women vegetable gardeners in Kiang West includes the poor road network, poor road networks. Since Sibito Village are beneficiaries of a garden, do you have any plan in place to consider addressing the issue of the road network in Sibito? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, uh, Minority Leader. Um, in our deliberation, I think we explained that um, in the Giraffe Project, we have 200 kilometers of feeder road, and this feeder road is going to be implemented through the National Road Authority. And the purpose for the 200 kilometer feeder road is to create access for both the fields and the market. And Kiang is no exception. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister and Honorable Member for Bikama North. Honorable Members, we now move to question number 076 of 2022, posed by the Honorable Member for Fonyi Berefet. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, would the Honorable Minister of Agriculture consider providing agricultural garden to the community of Bese Village in Fonyi Prefect constituency to help augment their living wood, especially the women? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable, for Fonyi Prefect. Uh, Honorable Speaker, may I inform the Honorable Member for Fonyi Prefect that in my ministry, there are two projects I said earlier providing um, supporting vegetable production based on demand driven. I therefore advise my honorable member for Fonyi Benefit to link with my regional director and the Roots Project Director in West Coast Region for further information and collection of forms. However, I will also be happy to inform my honorable member for Fonyi Benefit that the Women Garden in Bullock and the women garden in Berefet that currently exist 
are part of those that are supposed to be upgraded by the Roots Project. They are part of the uh, former NEMA garden to be upgraded by the Roots Project. Thank you. Honorable Minister, since the, the Roots Project is a continuation of NEMA project, I want to know whether the Root Project will continue to construct the, the road of block going to their garden. The road is too rough. Block Kaponga. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable. I'm so access to fields. You are from Fony Berefet and you are aware of the construction of a feeder road that is from Somita going all the way to um, Sidjak inside. Uh, I cannot be specific about feeder road being constructed for, uh, for that specific village you asked for. However, feeder roads are part of the project to be implemented by NRA, and I cannot give specific villages that are going to benefit from the feeder road. However, in Fony Berefet, Somita is a beneficiary, and I'm sure you have seen the road construction has already started. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any supplementary questions, honorable members? Fony Bondali. Thank you, honorable speaker. And thank you, honorable minister of agriculture. Honorable, does this include the disabled in Fony Council? Sorry, for Fony Berefet. Can we hear your question again? I mean, does this program also benefit or includes the disabled? Which program? The gardening? Gardening, yeah. Women's mm -hmm. gardening in the roots program. Minister of Agriculture consider providing agriculture garden to the community of Besev in Fonyif Prefet constituency to help <coughs> their livelihood, especially the women. So I mean, does this include the disabled in that area? Answer is yes. Okay. Any mm -hmm. other? Our programs are non-discriminatory and every activity of either the Ministry of Government of the Go or the Go Ministry of Agriculture or the Government of the Gambia cannot discriminate based on ability or disability. So our program includes every individual, every Gambian or a resident of the Gambia. Honorable Member for Sandu. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, earlier on this year, I accompanied uh, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture on a tour in Yuara, where among the projects we visited a site under construction, that is a coal store in Yuara for the women group there. Uh, can the Honorable Minister inform this August gathering whether the project is wholly funded by Roots Project? Honorable member, that's a substantive question. The project is on the roots. On, we are not talking about roots project. Yes. Look, at the po look at the question itself. Okay. okay. What's the next one? Okay. 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 Thank you. Right. I withdraw. Honorable member for Pony Garol. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair, and thank you, Honorable Minister. I just want to find out whether there are plans for new communities that are interested in this horticultural uh, gardening. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, um, Honorable Member for Fony Jarol. Uh, for the giraffe project, the initial take-in, that is the 40 garden women and youth-led, have already been identified. However, I think I've mentioned in my speech here that the, the gardens are demand-driven. Demand-driven means you have the need, you go and collect the forms, and you apply. So I will encourage that you do so, Honorable Member. Thank you. Honorable Member for Shame. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Minister for Agriculture, you mentioned two gardens in this uh, consequence. When is your ministry going to start those gardens? Thank you very much. 
the Honorable Speaker and Member for Same. I think I've said under the Giraffe Project, a massive sensitization was just conducted throughout the country, and currently there is a reconnaissance survey taking soil samples to establish suitability. So we are at the stage of soil analysis, and we hope, based on the results of the soil analysis, implementation will be soon. Thank you. Honorable Member for Woolley East. Yes, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much, Agriculture Minister. Uh, Honorable Minister, in this uh, project, guiding projects that are taking place, uh, do, is there any counterpart, counterpart funding on behalf of the beneficiaries? Are these beneficiaries supposed to pay something in addition to what uh, the project is offering? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and Honorable for Woolley. Um, no, this giraffe project um, gardens are funded by the project. It is when there are matching grants, that is when individuals are expected to have their part, and that mostly applies to individuals and SMEs. But for the gardens, they are funded by the project, and there is no individual, individual contribution. Of course, the women group that normally apply, or the youth group, have certain criteria. That is, they must have been registered for at least about a year. They must have a bank account with a minimum amount in, in the bank account. There are sets of criteria, but not to contribute. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Woolley East and uh, Honorable Minister. Honorable Members, we now move to question number 077 of 2022 asked by Honorable Member for Combo East. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, uh, for giving me the floor. Honorable Speaker, could the Honorable Minister for Agriculture consider reviving the Scan Gambia Fish Farming Company, which was a major source of employment for women and youths in the Combo East constituency. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable Member for Combo East. Honorable Speaker, I want to advise that the question be redirected to the Minister of Fisheries and Water Resources, since Can Gambia never operated under the Ministry of Agriculture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Member for Combo East, you can still direct your question to the relevant ministry. We Thank now you. move to question number 078 of 2022, Member for Gara Central. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, could the Honorable Minister for Agriculture inform this August House when do his ministry plan to build food stores in each of the following communities in Jara Central. Puibaja Lokunda village, Foraya Wolof, Minna village, Sare Bulli, uh, and Buiba Musanjado. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you to Honorable Member for Jara Central. Honorable Speaker, I wish to inform the Honorable Member for Jara Central that my ministry, through its active projects, will be constructing cold storage facilities for vegetable produce and food stores. Roots Project is currently constructing cold stores, and one is located very close to Jara Central, that is in Soma, behind the police station, whereas the Giraffe Project will be providing two state-of-the-art agrology centers, as mentioned earlier in my speech, one in Farafenya and Wasco. Honorable Speaker, may I also inform the Honorable Member for Jara Central that before December 2022, my ministry will support, with support from ISDB, uh, will be building two mega stores measuring 20 by 40 as part of our medium and long term food security strategy. <coughs> uh, we intend to have such stores in every region of the country, as alluded to during my speech yesterday. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, to be more specific, Honorable Minister, what I mean here is that um, the local food stores that we used to call Mangasin, 
You see, these communities that I have mentioned, the, since existence of uh, the former regime, the Dasi Jawara time, we used to have these magazines constructed in, some, in every community. So since Jawara time, these communities that I mentioned here has never benefited from these so-called magazines. So these are the specific ones that I'm requesting. Thank you very much, Honorable, uh, for Jara Central. We are aware of your uh, concern. Um, the storage facilities I mentioned are the ones we are doing now. The Ministry of Agriculture, just like any other ministry, cannot do everything at the same time. We are aware of the need, and um, we, will, we will have it in the back of our mind. There is a need for your community and the ministry will be operating on an as-needed basis and as resources available. But we recognize the need, and thank you so much. Honorable, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Honorable, the questioner, honorable member for Gara. Huh? No, it's okay. You are okay. Yeah. Honorable members, I now invite the honorable member for Tumana. Thank you very much, hon uh, honorable chair. Honorable Speaker, uh, I want to know if the, the vegetable garden project, uh, the vegetable food stores are going to be provided in my constituency because we have a, a line of villages that are concentrated heavily on vegetable production uh, from Damfakunda all the way to uh, Tinkinjo to Sanundi. That belt is a heavily uh, uh, vegetable production area. So, and we have a problem when we get to Basse to, for them to sell their produce. Honorable, honorable member, <laughs> yeah. I just yeah, reminded <laughs> ourselves <laughs> that let's, let's not ask substantive questions okay, to the honorable sorry. minister. Okay, thank you. Then. Questions must be related to the, to the principal question or to the answers given. Honorable member for Lower Salum. Thank you, um, Honorable Minister. Um, in your submissions, you mentioned the root is building coal stores. In your submission, right? Are you aware that these coal stores, there is a percentage that these women uh, gardeners paid, 20 percent. In the average, is over 500,000 plus that they should pay. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker, and thank you to Honorable Member for Lower Salum. Yes, I was in Jara Soma at the laying of the stone for the coal store in, in Soma. Yes, the beneficiaries, that is the women group that qualify, normally they go through a, a very competitive process. And the women group that qualifies to own the store and will be operating it on a commercial basis, do pay a certain amount as part of their ownership, as part of the process. And yes, it is 20 percent for what that doesn't mean. They have to pay a cash value of 20 percent. They just have to pay something equivalent of 20 percent, be it land, be of equity, be of whatever. But it must be 20 percent of the overall cost of the, of the coal storage project. And, and yes, you are right, that is the 20 percent that the women are expected to contribute because they will operate it all by themselves, it will be their own, and it will be on a commercial basis. Individuals who will be storing uh, facilities there will be expected to pay a token for at least to be able to keep the facility running. Thank you. Honorable Member for Woolley East. Yes, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, my question is, whether the ministry has actually made uh, a survey to identify communities that are in dire need of these seed stores. I could remember we providing something to agriculture to build some seed stores, but they could not build all. So the process continues. Do you, do you continue to make a survey to identify this? Because there are a lot of these seed stores need in my constituency. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Member for Woolley East. The Ministry, through help with the ISDB, that is the Islamic Development Bank, restructuring with the, the, all the seed stores, that is the, the traditional seed stores, should be undergoing rehabilitation in 2023. 
and the ministry has made need assessment of seed stores and I'm sure the committee that went to URR have seen us one of the projects building seed stores and dry floors in URR and CRR. So there has been a need assessment of seed stores throughout the country and the current seed stores, the old fashioned like Honorable mentioned magazine will undergo rehabilitation in 2023. Thank you. Honorable Member for Bikama South. Thank you, Honorable uh, Speaker. Honorable Minister, uh, with regards to the 20% payment of the coal store, are you aware of that, the one in Jara Soma, the value of the land that has been provided? It says more than 200,000. So the remaining 300,000 has been mobilized by the women themselves. Are you aware of that? Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable, for Brikama South. Yes, I am aware. Thank you. Honorable members, we now have question number 079 of 2022 by the Honorable Member for Woolley East. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, could the Honorable Minister for Agriculture update this August Assembly on the state of implementation of the Agriculture Rice Value Change Program project? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Woolley East. Honorable Speaker, may I inform this August gathering that the Rice Value Chain Transformation Project just completed its midterm review, which was rated satisfactory. Today, the project has supported farmers in CRR and URR with improved and certified rice seeds, namely, um, we provided 200 kilograms of breeder seeds of Orilog 6 and Nerica L19 sub 1. We also provided 15.35 metric tons of foundation seeds. Um, the Orilog 6 and the Nerica L19 sub 1 was facilitated by this project. Um, this variety is of high yield and also has ability to resist flood conditions. Um, the project also provided um, so much other rice seeds to farmers in URR and CRR. We did also provide through this project power tillers and rice milling machines and tressers. And all these have been provided to the farmers through this uh, project. So we, we think um, the implementation rate as evaluated by the donors are satisfactory. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, this project was supposed to provide pumping machines because they are irrig irrigated rice projects. And then it's also supposed to provide uh, tractors and a stock for the, the beneficiaries. So uh, if you just provide seeds and then foundation seeds, what about the rest of the equipment that we are supposed to, and the store, et cetera, et cetera, and the road, road construction? To the, to the high speed. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Woolley. There's a little bit of confusion among people to differentiate regional rice value chain and rice value chain. There are two projects under the ministry. The regional rice value chain development project is supposed to do the, the hard part of the work, that is the, the land development and the provision of those tractors. And the rice value chain for which you asked the question is supposed to do the soft part. That is the provision of seeds and extension services and all the services that I mentioned. So the regional, regional rice value chain for which you did not ask was supposed to do the question that you asked. So the, the rice value chain is rated satisfactory and is providing as expected for now, and the regional rice value chain will do its part as soon as we have clearance from Badia. Thank you. Member, no more supplementary. Member for Opanyomi. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity once again. Honorable Minister, you provided the, you quantified the amount of kilograms you, you have given to the farmers in URR and CRR. And you also mentioned about the 
power tillers and presence, but you don't quantify how much did you supply in terms of numbers. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and thank you for Honorable from Opanyomi. I do not have those figures. I uh, will be happy to provide them for you uh, once our technicians are consulted. Thank you. Honorable members, we now move to question number 080 of 2022, member for Woolley West. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, could the Honorable Minister of Agriculture inform this August Assembly of any intervention program to maximize crop production for farmers and so household food security and achieve SDG goals 2 and 12 respectively? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Woolley West. Honorable Speaker, I am happy to inform this August Assembly that in 2021-2022 production season, the Ministry of Agriculture, in collaboration with the Department, through Agro-Engineering Unit, distributed about 525 sets of small farm implements, like eco sign hose, to smallholder farmers across the country to boost their yield. Furthermore, the Department of Agriculture, in collaboration with the Giraffe Project, distributed 50 tons of improved maize seeds and about 200 tons of certified rice seeds to smallholder farmers as another intervention program initiated by the Ministry of Agriculture. This is all geared towards attaining food and nutrition security and by extension income security. However, the issue of climate change is a serious concern that is hurting agriculture in its attainment of food and nutrition security. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. No. Okay. Honorable Member for Kiang West. Honorable Minister of Agriculture, uh, do you have plans to work with Ministry of uh, Forestry in the case of mitigation of uh, illegal logging as it is also contributing to climate change. When the question actually is interventions program to maximize crop production for farmers. You can ask your question. You can send your question to the Honorable Minister. He will answer your question. Honorable Speaker, he has talked about climate change, and illegal logging is a contributing factor to climate change. So this is why I ask the intervention of their ministry with respect to this, you know, hazardous activity. Thank you. Observation. I think that question should be asked to the Minister of Environment and not Agriculture, because in fact the questions are not even related. No, Honorable, you, you, I, I think you didn't Honorable listen very members. well. I, you are relating your question to an answer given by the Honorable Minister. And the Honorable Minister talked about logging and climate change. I'm asking, Honorable Member. Uh -huh. What's the question? I said, you said your question is informed by the answer given by the Honorable Minister. Exactly. Which relates to climate change and logging that he talked about. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. I am not aware of that. Probably I was talking. No, uh, what, I, what I asked was the question here of the question asked about the realization of the STDs 2 and 12. And in his deliberation, he has also talked about the steps they are taking to combat climate change and issues that can you know, hinder the realization of these things. So I'm asking the question to say illegal logging, which is the indiscriminate cutting down of trees, is also contributing to climate change. And what is his ministry doing to ensure that, you know, we combat that? That's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. 
uh, my, my, you know, probably the mentioning of it, but is that question relevant to the Honorable Minister on cli climate change? Observation, Speaker. Honorable Member, I want to hear you, Honorable Member. Observation, of course it does. Let me hear the Honorable Member who posed the question. My question is... Add your question, I said. Yes. Is your question relevant to the Honorable Minister or to the Ministry responsible for climate change? This is why I, 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 I said it, it, it should have, in my deliberation, if one should listen very well, it, it, it would be multi-sectoral, you know, approach. This is why I said, what is your ministry doing the, with the Minister of Forestry, which would have been a multi-sectoral approach to ensure that, you know, they stop that activity? This was my question. Whether he is... Your question is, your honourable member, multi-sectoral approach, if I heard you well. Exactly. And whether he is consulting the other ministries. Exactly. Thank you very much, honourable speaker, and thank you, honourable from Kiang West. The Ministry of Agriculture is aware of the fact that uh, indiscriminate cutting of trees will have a major impact in our climate resilience and it will also have an impact in food security because there's a lot of food source in our wild forest. However, um, of recent, the Ministry of Agriculture, in collaboration with the Ministry of Forestry, uh, had a, a joint workshop where we talked about um, agroforestry. So uh, I'm happy to inform you that we are aware of the connection between uh, keeping our forest and our progress in agriculture. Thank you very much. Honorable Member for Woolley East. Yes, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, uh, we know that among the seeds that are now modified, uh, maize is part of those seeds. And uh, we also know the impact of those maize because they are trying to replace our local seeds. So the maize seeds that you, uh, your ministry is distributing, are they modified seeds or are they our local, local seeds? Because uh, th that, is, uh, that is causing some difference to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Willie West. They are not modified because I think the word modified, you are thinking of genetically modified products, GM products. These maize seeds are not modified, they are improved varieties. And this we do even in animal breeding, that is why you have breeds like Ladumia. So they are improved varieties so that their productivity can be higher, but they are not modified. Thank you. Honorable Member for Opanyomi. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Honorable Minister, the Honorable Member asked for the intervention program to maximize, to maximize crop production for farmers and ensure household food security. Honorable, Honorable Minister, you are aware of rice development strategies has been developed by, the, by your ministry. Are you thinking of costing this particular strategy and make sure that you incorporate it into the... Are you thinking of costing this particular important strategy, that's the rice development strategy, that is a drive towards achieving this for security for our people, and also to incorporate it into the national budget? Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Opanyomi. Uh, we have under the ministry what we call the National Food System Pathway, for which I'm the convener. And at this stage, every country in the world has a food system pathway. That is um, to talk about the national food security, mid-term and long-term. We just uh, concluded our paper, and it was validated at a workshop. The consultants is at the stage where the consultants are now putting in their input on the food system pathway. This pathway 
not only rice, but all the entire food system of the Gambia. And the next stage after the input of the consultants is to put a cost to it, and then we'll move to the stage of fundraising. Yes, as a ministry, our food system pathway uh, is at a stage where we'll be costing it soon, and then we'll be followed by fundraising, not only for rice, but for the entire food system of the Gambia. Thank you very much. Honorable member for Banjul Central. No, I would draw honorable speaker. Honorable members, we now move to question number 081 of 2022 by honorable member for Lower Salu. Thank you, um, honorable speaker. Um, thank you, honorable minister. Um, honorable speaker, could the honorable minister for agriculture explain to this August assembly how the Japanese rice was sold in the country and where are the buyers? Who are the buyers, sorry? Who are the buyers? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Lower Salum. Honorable Speaker, I would like to inform this August Assembly that the government of the Gambia, through the Ministry of Agriculture, in March this year, received a consignment of 2,596 metric tons of the 30 kilogram Japanese rice from the government of Japan under the Japan Rice Program. The total number of bags was equivalent to 86,000 533 shipped to the Gambia. The consignment upon arrival was transported from the seaport to a warehouse by the Ministry of Agriculture at Bone Road. Previously, the rice was sold directly from the seaport. The buyers were identified by the Office of the President and sold at $550 per bag to meet the minimum deposit requirement in the account, of account at the Central Bank of the Gambia in lots of 1,000 bags per buyer. The payment process was facilitated by the Accountant General. The rice was redistributed to potential buyers by the Ministry of Agriculture in the month of April. All buyers have received their rice. Uh, Honorable Speaker, to put this in a context, the rice was sent in the name of the Ministry of Agriculture in March. It was received, put at a warehouse in Bone Road, and individual buyers were supposed to be allocated in lots, or not in single bags, in lots of thousands. You go to the office of the president, you do the paperwork, you go and pay the money directly at the treasury, you take the receipt, you go to the warehouse, and you collect the thousand back. And that was how it was operated, and this was in March 2022. Thank you. Thank you, um, Honorable Speaker. Did you identify these buyers, whether they are Gambians or non-Gambians? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Every buyer, as far as we know, was a Gambian. Did the Gambian buyers transfer it to non-Gambians? We cannot guarantee that. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. You cannot guarantee that. Um, Honorable Minister, are you aware that two trucks were apprehended in Senegal's border? If yes, what is the cause of that? Thank you. I am aware of the apprehension of two trucks at the Mauritanian border. Thank you. Honorable Speaker. No, no, no. You have no, only two I'm trying minutes. to make. No, no, no. Honorable members. Um, honorable Speaker. By extent. Honorable members, please. You, you, you have, you have, you have it, gold. Honorable, honorable member for Latikunda Sabi. Honorable Speaker. No. The reasons why of the corrections, I want to clear those. Honorable uh, member, please take your seat. Honorable member for Latikunda Sabi. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, and thank you very much, uh, Minister of Agriculture. You said this uh, rice came to reports collected to the board road and the uh, office of the president identified the buyers. Why office of the president identified the buyers? Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I cannot 
tell you why the Office of the President identified the bias. The Ministry of Agriculture did not identify the bias, so I would advise that you redirect your question to the Vice President. Honorable Member for Upper Salum. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, Honorable Speaker, would the uh, Ministry consider giving out this rice to the needy people instead of actually selling the rice? And, you know, later on, the government goes back to buy uh, rice or, uh, for, 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 for some needy people. So would they consider giving out the rice to the needy people instead of selling them? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable from Opasalu. Um, this rice from Japan is part of the Japanese aid, and it has conditions attached. Instead of them giving you the money, they give you this rice, you sell the rice, so that you can use that money for your development agenda. Thank you very much. Honorable Member for Bacau. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Minister, you've indicated that bias we are identified by Office of the President. As a responsible ministry, did you find out what we are the criteria used to qualify the bias? Thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, uh, Honorable from Bacau. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I cannot be specific as to what the criteria were. Um, this is a question that, um, if you want more details, uh, my technicians will be happy to help me supply you with um, the information as to what the criteria were for the bias. However, I am pretty sure that the bias were Gambian nationals. Honorable Member for Lower Badibu. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, the question that I wanted to ask has been asked already, and it has been answered. That is uh, the two trucks which were, of course, apprehended at the border. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Member. Honorable Member for Bushumbala. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, and uh, Honorable Minister for Agriculture. When you, your ministry learn of these two trucks being apprehended uh, outside this jurisdiction, what did you do? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, um, Honorable from Busumbala. Um, these trucks were apprehended in Senegal. I was notified, and we have established that none of the rice was stolen in this country. The rice was clearly sold out to Gambians. And if those Gambians sell it to a Senegalese or a Mauritanian, we had, it's regrettable that the rice would have stayed in the Gambia. But if the Gambians who bought the rice decide to sell it outside of the Gambia, there was no contractual agreement between us and the buyers that once you buy the rice, you couldn't move it out of the country. So if they so did, it's unfortunate that they were so interested in the business instead of the population. But yes, there was no crime committed. Honorable Minority Leader and Member for Become a North. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. This is a request, Honorable Minister, uh, maybe not now, but later, if your ministry can provide us the list and address of the potential bias of this size. Honor Thank you. I, I did not understand the word potential. Is it future bias, you say, because you use potential? Let, let, let me qualify then, not potential per se. Now, the list of the bias of this, right, if you, your ministry can, through your experts or technicians, provide us the list of these bias of the Japanese rice. Th thank you, Honorable Speaker. Unfortunately, my ministry did not identify the buyers, nor did we receive the money. It was paid directly to the Accountant General. I would advise the Honorable Member to redirect his question to the appropriate ministry where the money was paid or where the buyers were identified. 
Thank you. Honorable members, we now move to question number 082 of 2022, posed by Honorable Member for Upper Salon. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, rice production in Upper Salom has reduced for the past several years due to salt intrusion and the lack of access roads to the freshwater areas. Could the Honorable Minister for Agriculture inform this August Assembly how his ministry intends to remedy um, such situation in Upper Salom, especially for the communities, communities of Bati, Jaring, and Bantanto? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from uh, Salom. Honorable Speaker, I am pleased to inform this August gathering that projects under our ministry, namely Giraffe, have supported many farm, Gambian farmers with salt-tolerant varieties, which is one of the efforts put in place to address our salt intrusion and climate challenges. With regards to access roads in the communities mentioned by the Honorable Member for Upper Salum, previous projects such as FASDEP has constructed some access roads However, I want to bring this to his notice. The recently launched giraffe project will also be constructing access or feeder roads to hard to reach communities, as I mentioned earlier. The Department of Agriculture gives technical advice to rice growers in the catchment area, example, training farmers on the best agronomic practice of rice cultivation as one of the mandates of the department. In addition to this, the Soil and Water Management Unit also trained farmers on the application of phosphor gypsum to treat, salt, um, to treat soil acidity levels. So these are the things that um, the Ministry is doing currently. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, Honorable Minister, would you, I would like you to give me uh, maybe a direction on what I should do as the representative of the people to ensure that um, uh, we contact Giraffe um, uh, to get assistance for the construction of this road network. Because again, you, the ministry may not know them, but as a representative, I would like to get some kind of direction so that I can kickstart the process. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I will advise the Honorable Minister to contact our Giraffe Project Directorate and possibly contact um, National Road Authority uh, you'll be aware of the targeted communities, and if they involve Upper Salum, you will be duly informed. Thank you. Honorable Member for Kiang West. Honorable Minister, uh, do you have any other livelihood activity in your response to the salt intrusion in the identified area? by the question here. Do you have any other livelihood activity that, this, that the inhabitants of these various communities could engage into? Hence, their farmlands were intruded by salt. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Kiang West. I'm so salt intruded areas only affect rice fields. Salt intrusion hardly affect your corn fields or your vegetable gardens. So communities that live in areas like Lower Parokian or Fonis that are the most affected or parts of North Bank for salt intrusion still have the traditional production of corn, the traditional vegetable production, the traditional breeding of animals and traditional rearing of small remnants. So their livelihood still exists. The salt intrusion has more to do with rice production. And as a result, NARI, which is our research arm, is in high gear in the production of very, very salty tolerant varieties. And as we speak, there is already salt tolerant varieties available for cultivation as a way to mitigate um, the access to um, expanding the rice cultivation uh, aspect. Thank you. Honorable Member for Geshuang. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Do your minister have a similar plan for the Joswang women price field in Old Joswang, which are also affected within, by the same conditions? 
Thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Joshua. I think um, the rice production in Joshua is no exception from the rice production in salt um, affected areas. Like I said, the Ministry, being aware of the salt challenge, has introduced rice varieties that can grow extremely well in salty water. So I will advise Honorable Member for Joshua to contact our Directorate of Urban Agriculture and for information and access to varieties that are salt tolerant. Thank you. Honorable Member for Central Badibu. Thank you. Honorable Minister, can you inform the August Gathering whether you have a, um, a framework or a strategic plan how to ensure that access to the fields and to the markets are really catered for, you know, by looking at the past projects of first dev and roots? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Badibu Central. Yes, um, we have a strategy and a roadmap. There is what we call the Gambia National Investment, uh, Agriculture Investment Plan. There is also food and nutrition security. These are all agricultural policies. However, to be specific about access to market and access to the fields, I think I've elaborated on this in my previous deliberation, that part of our giraffe project is going to be dedicated to 200 kilometers of feeder roads. And these feeder roads are going to improve access to the fields and to the vegetable gardens. And also I talked about us constructing agrology centers. These agrology centers, I said, are going to be one shop, uh, stop shops. And that means they will have a garage that will give access for the women to bring the produce. It will have a market. They will sell, and if it's, there are leftovers, the agrology center will also have storage facilities. They'll be able to store. And once they sell, they don't have to go home with the money. There will also be banks at those centers. So this is what we are doing uh, as far as access to the fields and access to market is concerned. Thank you. Honorable member for Bushumbala. Uh, thank you very much, uh, honorable speaker, and thank you very much, honorable minister for agriculture. Um, I want your ministry, I want you to enlighten us about your ministry's support and readiness to make sure that you, know, you improve this traditional farming you are talking about in the area of um, maize crop uh, production and other, are and other areas. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable from Busumbala. Yes, we are fully aware of the need to improve our traditional maize cultivation because maize forms the basis for our chicken feed and until we develop that feed, we will not be protein sufficient. And this is the reason why this year we distributed those 50 metric tons of improved varieties of corn. They are very high yield, they are disease resistant and I think that is one step towards improving our traditional uh, production of corn or maize. Thank you. Honorable Member for Tumana. Thank you, Honorable uh, Speaker. Uh, are there plans to prevent salt intrusion into other areas, such as upper, upper parts of LRR, CRR, and URR? Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I heard the Honorable Member for Woolley trying to say there is no salt in URR. <laughs> yes, I think he's right. There is no salt in URR. Look, preventing salt intrusion is an extremely daunting challenge, and it is a major climate uh, phenomenon. What we can do or should do is to try to live with the salt intrusion, and that is to introduce varieties that will grow in salty water. I think that is a cheaper and more sustainable way of dealing with the salt intrusion than trying to stop it because it is extremely costly and um, it's, a, it's a major phenomenon. So the ministry's focus is to introduce varieties that will do well in salty areas 
so you don't have to worry about the intrusion of salt. Thank you. Honorable members, we now move to question number 083 of 2022 by the member for Serekunda West. Thank you, Honorable Minister <coughs> and Honorable Speaker. Um, Honorable Speaker, the indications are that our farmers were faced with a very high price of fertilizer during the current farming season. Uh, could the Honorable Minister for Agriculture provide an update to this August Assembly on the tons of fertilizer bought for this farming season? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Serekunda West. Honorable Speaker, fertilizer price, just like most commodities, we are affected by disruptions in our global supply chains caused by COVID-19 and of recent the Ukraine war. However, the government has made subsidized fertilizer available to the farmers in this country. And in 2021-2022 season, 14,000 metric tons of fertilizer were imported for the farmers of the Gambia. Thank you. I will speak. Uh, the, this August Assembly is aware that uh, the current season, that is this 2021-2022 season, fertilizer was bought and in stock. I'm not talking about what you've purchased recently. These things are purchased before the Ukraine war. What happened to those stones of fertilizer? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, um, Honorable Sarah Kunda West. There was a fertilizer purchase prior to the season of 2021-2022, and the plan was for it to be sustaining this country for two years. However, I think part of the question yesterday from our Honorable from Jokadu dealt with the issue of fertilizer leak across the border in the previous year. And every fertilizer that was bought could not be here for two years because fertilizer leaked out of the country through scrub loss practices, and I think we did address that yesterday. So the entire fertilizer stock that we have is the stock that was bought for the 2021-2022 season. We do not have stock from previous years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Could you inform this August House what were the measures that you have taken on those scrupulous people who have uh, managed to smuggle fertilizer that was meant for our Gambian farmers to outsiders? Thank you very much. See, for you to do something, I guess crime must be committed. We, we at the Ministry of Agriculture um, understand that people behaved immorally but might not be illegally. So buying fertilizer and taking it across the border at that time uh, probably wasn't a crime. It was immoral, it was un-Gambian, it was unhelpful, it was not dignified to do. But yes, businessmen who were money force instead of Gambia force did so. And as far as we know, it is very unfortunate. Our role is to put in place mechanisms to stop that kind of practice happening. And that is exactly what we did for the 2021-2022 season, that individuals can only buy from their known local cooperatives, and also they can only buy from the mixed farming centers of the Ministry of Agriculture. And that way, this year, we haven't had any reports of fertilizer bleeding out across the border. However, what happened in the previous year, we could not establish that um, it, it was, it was uh, any law was broken, and, and, and we did not have any advice in that, in that line. However, we think it is immoral, we think it is on Gambia. Thank you. Honorable Member for Iliasa. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, as Gambians are crying for the high price of uh, fertilizer this year, um, what plan do your ministry have to reduce the price of fertilizer? 
for an average farmer to purchase next year. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Iliaza. Um, fertilizer price or fertilizer as a commodity, like I said earlier, is no exception from all other commodities that have gone through um, the current stocks in the world. And fertilizer price, I'm sure so you are aware, did cost the government on average, on average, $3,500 per bag on average. And the government subsidized about $1,500 per bag, leaving the farmer to pay $2,000. This price, as high as it may sound, is competitive in the sub-region. And this price, it's reasonable given our economic challenges. And this is the current price that we think is midway. It will help the farmer but also allow the government a breeding space so that we are able to buy another stock next year. The price we think is reasonable. Thank you. Honorable Member for Central Badibu. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Minister, can we safely conclude that you are not ready to fight corruption? Because uh, you confirmed to us that unscrupulous people, you confirmed that you called them unscrupulous who are engaged in the fertilizer deal. Now you are telling us that it's difficult to tell whether they commit the crime. Can you define crime? <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I don't know what the Honorable Member for Badibu is trying to allude to. When you say corruption, these are not individuals under the Ministry of Agriculture. These are not civil servants. These are individual Gambian businessmen who bought the fertilizer and took it to Senegal. And what do you call that corruption? That cannot be corruption. Corruption is if these were our staff, if these were civil servants, if they were under the Ministry of Agriculture, yes. But if Gambians, the ministry had a limit to the amount of fertilizer an individual can buy. And if you went and collect seven of your relatives and queue with them, and each of them buy seven bags, that will afford you 70 bags. And if you took that to Senegal, why will the Ministry of Agriculture be asked about corruption? I don't think that has anything to do with corruption, and the Ministry wasn't responsible for that either. Thank you very much. Honorable Member for Upper Fuladu West. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Speaker. Um, thank you so much. Um, Honorable Minister, um, I just want you to... Um, Tell this August gathering, last, la, as I said, la, like last year, uh, some farmers were complaining that enough fertilizer was brought into the country, but but still there are farmers who were crying that they could not get they could not have fertilizer. So, do your ministry have any plan in order to have that you know how to call it good control over the way fertilizers you know are sold to farmers in this country? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, uh, Member for Upper Fuladu. Currently, we have about 82 cooperatives in the country, and we have quite a number of mixed farming centers. As a way to control fertilizer leak across, we have decided that fertilizer be sold at our mixed farming centers and using the cooperatives. So there are cooperative societies nationwide, and there are mixed farming centers nationwide. So fertilizer is available and accessible. I'll advise honorable uh, member for Opapuladu to check with the nearest mixed farming center in your constituency or the cooperative society around, uh, in and around your constituency. That is a way to mitigate what we planned in the previous years, and it's a control measure. However, the access to fertilizer is, is, is sufficient. People, are, people know where fertilizer is, so there is access and it's still available. Thank you. Honorable Member for Janjambure. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker. Um, my question to the Honorable Minister will be, um, I just want to know, when was the first consignment of the 2021 
um, farming season fertilizer received by the Ministry of Agriculture? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable from Janyambure. I know it was in country sufficient time before the beginning of the rainy season. However, I cannot be date specific as to the date exactly that the fertilizer got in the country. But I am pretty sure that it was in country sufficient time for the farmers to access it for the rainy season. Thank you. Honorable member for Woolley East. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, we know that fertilizer is a very expensive commodity. And uh, as you said, the Ukraine war has even made it worse. But uh, of recent, uh, we are aware that uh, Russia is providing fertilizer to poor African countries, free of charge. Is your ministry aware of this? And if you are aware, have you made any attempt to actually access uh, this uh, very important uh, provision? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Woolley East. As far as we are concerned, we are not aware of Russia giving free fertilizer to African countries. However, we will be interested in such an offer because our interest is to get fertilizer for our farmers. Uh, but as far as we are concerned, we are not aware of free fertilizer in the market. Thank you. Honorable members, we now move to question number 084 of 2022, posed by member for Lower Badibu. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. And thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Honorable Speaker, could the Honorable Minister for Agriculture consider providing security fence to the women vegetable gardens in the southern part of Lower Badibu, which are currently in poor stage and without proper fences. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable Member for Lower Badibu. Honorable Speaker, the Roots and the Giraffe Project both have a component to boost production and productivity of women vegetable produce. These projects will re rehabilitate vegetable gardens and establish new gardens. The projects are operating in almost all agricultural regions of the Gambia. For the Department of Agriculture, there is a vote line called Agriculture Input, Land Leveling and Fencing. Due to resource constraints, the department cannot solve the problems of poor fencing for some vegetable gardens. However, progress has been made in the 20, progress was made in 2020-2021 season, where some vegetable gardens were provided with chain link wire, ranging from five to 15 bundles um, to about 10 gardens. This was they were able to do this, and they did this to enhance the capacity and income security of the vegetable gardeners. Uh, to add on to this, I think I mentioned earlier that um, vegetable gardening is a major priority for the ministry, and the uh, projects are demand-driven. That is the giraffe and roots project. The giraffe project have already identified the 40 gardens. The roots project is rehabilitating Neymar gardens, and also it will build 30 new gardens. So what I'll advise the honorable member to do is to liaise with our regional directorate in North Bank, plus the, the director of roots in the North Bank to be part of the applicants for the prospective gardens to be constructed or gardens to be rehabilitated. Thank you. Thank you. I do not have any subsequent question. Thank you, Honorable Member. Honorable Member for Basse. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. My question was uh, partially been answered because my concern was this garden fencing in, but uh, the Honorable Minister have answered it because it's a concern before, uh, because the ministry have a giant project which they were constructing stores, uh, or, or how to call it, cold stores for vegetables. But the first step is to at least have a good fencing so that at least the, the women can be at ease to, so that they can cultivate this vegetable and get it to the stores. But 
thank God and the, the minister have already addressed sure, Honourable member. Yes. So thank I you very much. I will my question, sir. Honourable member for Iliasa. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Thank you very much, Honourable Minister. I want to concur with my colleague, the Honourable Member for Lower Badibu. It is uh, true that uh, people around the southern part of uh, um, uh, our area, like from Kerawan down to Farafenye, um, those people definitely are not benefiting as far as uh, these um, garden projects are concerned. So I don't know what your, 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 your ministry is doing to help those people to benefit from these uh, projects. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Iliasa. I think I'm happy to inform you that Iliasa is no exception. I don't know if we spoke directly about this or not, but Iliasa, uh, both the Badibus have quite a number of gardens allocated to them as part of the 20 women-led and the 20 youth-led gardens. So if you want to be specific about or know which exact community has qualified in your area, I uh, will be happy to provide you with the information, or you can directly contact our director for Giraffe Project. You will get the information as to the exact communities that has benefited, but I can assure you that there are communities in the North Bank and specifically in the Badibus that have definitely qualified for the gardens. Thank you. Honorable Member for Kian West. Honorable Minister of Agriculture, uh, of present we have realized a mass intervention in the area of women gardening and defense. Look, it's one thing, but sustainability is another thing. And uh, if you move around, you realize that uh, the fencing mechanism is, is having a problem, that the length between wire poles is too, is too far, and therefore the wires will fall in a short period of time. What is the sustainability mechanism that you guys are doing in consultation with the beneficiaries? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable from Kian West. This is a very important question, and I think um, I like it for enlightenment purpose. Part of the project has a component of sustainability. I think we've learned this in the previous agriculture projects. They will come in, do very well, and they will wrap up, and it will collapse. Part of the components of projects now is sustainability and ownership by the, the beneficiaries. Because if you, if you operate in a garden for a period of five years, I think they should be able to collect a minimal amount from every beneficiary as they cultivate and as they harvest and sell so that they are able to maintain their garden because these projects are not going to be here for eternity. They are not going to be here forever. Projects come, they maximum of five years, six years, they face out. So part of the sensitization program itself, even before these gardens are built, what is built in is the issue of sensitizing the beneficiaries about sustainability. So we are fully aware of the sustainability challenge, but it's inculcated as part of the programs that projects, beneficiaries take ownership and they be aware of the fact that projects will phase out and they must be able to sustain it. Thank you. Honorable Member for Sami. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Honorable Minister, the Honorable Member for Iliasa is saying that most of the villages in his area are not included. What criteria did you use as a ministry to identify those villages? Thank you very much, Honorable from Same. I'm not sure if he said if most, of course, most villages will not be included. We are only talking about 40 gardens. Gambia has 1,881 villages. So it is natural that most villages will not be included. It's obvious. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we now have the Honorable Member for Bundung Kakunda. Yes, thank you very My much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Minister, huh? I think uh, huh? this... Excuse me. Honorable Speaker, Honorable, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. 
Honorable Minister, I think uh, this project is a very important project, and I understand most of the members, uh, I don't know whether they don't understand uh, the contact. I just want to know, uh, these beneficiaries in various communities, who are the contact persons who normally facilitate their application? Is it the National Assembly members or the ward councillors? Because this project is mainly a community-driven project, and normally most of those projects go directly to the councillors. So this is what I want you to clear to me, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Bundung. Um, a nationwide sensitization was conducted by these projects. Groups were invited to apply, and based on the information they supplied, an assessment was done, and groups qualified. And based on the groups that qualified, these facilities will be extended to those groups in the locations where they dwell. So they were not um, given through a councillor or through an honourable member of parliament. These projects were given based on the applications submitted by women groups or youth groups with a set of criteria, and that is what the um, process was. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honourable Member for Bundung and Honourable Minister. We now move on to question number 085 of 2022, posed by Member for Sabak Sanjar. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, could the Honourable Minister for Agriculture inform this August Assembly of the Ministry's plan to minimize post harvest loss of vegetables, local vegetables, please. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Sabak Sanjal. Post harvest loss is a major concern for the ministry and is a major concern for our food system pathway. And in fact, like I said yesterday, there was a whole summit, a week summit in Kigali. Of, of African agriculture ministers talking specifically about the concern about food waste. So in our part of the world, it's almost about 30% of our food goes to waste, either in harvest time or at consumption. Um, Honorable Speaker, I want to inform this Honorable Member from Sabak Sanjal. Like I said earlier, the Roots and the Giraffe Project under my ministry will be constructing cold storage facilities. And we think these cold storage facilities will help the waste of vegetables from our women gardeners. And that said, we also mentioned about the Roots Project going to be building very soon the two agrology centers. And these agrology centers, like I said, will have market, will have a cold store, and also will have bank and will have garage. So this will help in handling our post-harvest waste. But again, we also talked about the mega stores that we intend to build in every region. And like I said, the first two will be erected, one in CRR, one in URR, measuring 20 by 40. I think this will help in storage of our produce and it will minimize our post-harvest uh, losses. Thank you. Um, thank you, Honorable Minister. You mentioned that there are centers, centers that are to be um, constructed to minimize uh, post-harvest harvest loss. Um, what um, plans are you making to make sure that it is cross-cutting across the country, to make sure that at least every part of this country will have a storage facility? For example, in my area in Sabasanja, the women, uh, um, they, they, they engage a lot on um, tomatoes um, and, and, and other vegetables, but there, there is no storage facility in that area, and that results to a loss of many of those post harvest are lost. So I want you to tell me what plans you are making to make sure that these centers are cross-cutting the whole country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable um, from Sabak Sanjal. We are aware of the need for these facilities nationwide. And that is why the 15 that are under the Roots Project 
are going to be nationwide too. However, 15 will not be sufficient um, to cover the entire country, uh, village by village. And that is why the agrology centers come in, come in handy, because the agrology centers are huge. And I think if you are in Sabak Sanjal, your nearest biggest market for your produce is Farafenya. And that is why Farafenya has been identified as a site for one of the agrology centers. That way, communities around Sabak Sanjal and either Iliasa and parts of even uh, the Badibus are able to use this agrology center to sell any produce that is left over because it will have the capacity. It is going to be a mega site to be able to help um, in this food waste management. Uh, thank you. Uh, once again, um, if that um, a center is built in Farafenya, what mechanism is the ministry putting in place to make sure that all those that are living in that area would have at least um, access to it? And because if the area of Farafenya is saying, no, this belongs to Farafenya, I'm afraid my people may, might not benefit from it. That Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable from Sabak Sanjal. Uh, I think it will be part of our sensitization program. Our goal is this is a project for the entire Gambia. It is not a village specific. And also, um, our goal is to minimize food waste. So we will do whatever it takes, uh, part of our sensitization, that um, these projects cover as many people as possible. Let, it the, project, uh, let the facility be as utilized as it can be. And, and we, will, we will endeavor to, to achieve that goal. Thank you. Honorable Thank Member you. for Lower Salum. Thank you, um, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I will take you back to your submission on the roots. Don't you think that these cold stores that roots are trying to build in constituencies or regions, for instance, in Lower Salum, is Lower Salum, Upper Salum, Nyanija, and Salum. The, the, the cold store um, um, parameter is 8 by um, 10. Only lower salmon can occupy that one because we have three gardens, four, no, sorry, four women's gardens. And the 20% that is to paid by the women is 20% at the, at the equivalent of $525,000, which the land is acquired is part of it. The land is less than $25,000. In fact, it's for free. And there is a constraint on the women's now to Honorable pay the Honorable member, please pose your question. I'm coming. Honorable, you are not please. making a debate. No, no, no. I have, to, I have to help the minister. No, no, just because pose your is, question. This is, this is, um, no, pose your question. Here. You can give it a small preamble for him to understand. Point, of, point of order. Speak. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Yes, central body. Um, order 43, subsection 1, clause 1. Supplementary questions may be put for the purpose of elucidating an oral answer. Two, the member, hmm, the time taken to ask a supplementary question shall not be longer than one minute. And what the honorable member is doing is more than one minute. Yes, thank you. It's noted. It's yeah. not it. There is more even uh, honorable member yes. to that. Honorable okay, member, just please ask Sorry. your question. Sorry. Um, do you think it's, it's sufficient for five regions to, to get one cold store for 8 by 20, eight, ten, um, 20 meters, so 10 meters? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker and Member for, upper, um, member for Lower Salu. Do I think it's enough? No, it's not enough. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable yeah. Minister, post service loss, I believe, is beyond building cold stores. Do you have other ways and means to battle this situation or to reduce post service loss? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable, from uh, Badibu. Um, post service loss starts from us as individuals. Post harvest loss, in fact, includes the amount of food you put on your lunch plate, because we are all wasting food. And the food most wasted 
is wasted after it has in fact been prepared. So post-harvest loss is very cross-cutting. It is not only the farm perspective. When we talk about post-harvest loss, our mind only goes to the farm and the, and the warehouse. Post-harvest loss is a social responsibility. Post-harvest loss is a national dimension. We must think of post-harvest loss as food on our table itself. So the strategy is one, to sensitize the entire country about post-harvest loss as a major issue for us. Two, yes, coal stores are not the only solution. They are only part of the solution because the most perishable ones need coal stores. Yes, we are building other stores, like I said, we are building dry floors, we are building stores in the URR and CRR, which are, but also we are building these mega stores. So being aware of food, uh, post-harvest waste as a concern, as a country, is the beginning of the solution. And I think the conversation has started. I think that is what we need to spread in our families, in our individual homes, that every small thing matters, and there is serious food challenge in this world. India is our biggest, I think, supplier. I think of last week, they have announced that they are banning export of rice. Pakistan is a major rice producer. This year, you are all aware, Pakistan, about 70% of the country of Pakistan was flooded. So the supply of grain is going to be tighter in the world. So yes, let's manage our post harvest loss, but also let us gr grow our grains. Thank you. Honorable member for Upper Chalun. Th thank you, Honorable um, Speaker. Honorable Speaker, would the Honorable Minister um, consider um, uh, CRR North and South for these coal stores? Because CRR is very big, and other ministries actually have started to, to, to consider the two as, um, as, as two regions, like North and South. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, uh, Honorable Opasalum. Yes, CRR North, Wasu is a beneficiary of the coal stores, and that one is the, the first three to be built. I think I mentioned this earlier, one in Soma, one in Basse, and one in Wasu. These are areas that are going to be started in 22. They have already been started, actually. They are supposed to allow. The, the project is 12 months, the construction period, so Wasu is a beneficiary. But also the agrology centers that I talked about, I mentioned it earlier, one should be in Farafenya and one should be in Wasu. So that means CRR North is already over catered for. Thank you. Hon Honorable member for Kiang West. Honorable Minister of Agriculture, uh, the subject of post-harvest laws has ever been green, but uh, uh, in rivers there is a pre-harvest loss also, that the women will engage into this gardening until, you know, few time prior to the harvest, you know, either the, inter uh, the, the intrusion of uh, particularly animals or maybe diseases will come and uh, uh, they will have damages before the harvest. Do you have a recovery plan for these women who spend time, money, and energy, you know, to do this farming, and at the end of the day, before they harvest everything, so do you have a recovery plan for them? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable Kiang West. Yeah, whether it is pre or post harvest, food loss is a concern. Um, currently, Recovery is a challenge. We have our technical department, that is Department of Pest Control, and that is supposed to help with women from the get-go as far as um, uh, disease control is concerned. We also have um, soil and water management that will help uh, to mitigate issues arising from diseases or from production. We have our extension services under the Department of Agriculture, and extension workers are spread nationwide. So the, the structures are there to help our vegetable producers from the first stage all the way to the level of the market. So I'll advise that um, they take advantage of the structures that exist, and um, we, will, we will endeavor to, to control as much as we can the pre- and post-harvest loss that our women are facing. These issues of store that we talked about are just part of the solution, but they are not exhaustive. Thank you. Honorable Member for Fony Berefet. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Minister, talking of post-harvest laws, I know sometimes post-harvest laws occur through the market glut. But, Honorable Speaker, I want to ask the Honorable Minister, do they have any plan to stop the Senegalese 
uh, vegetable producers coming to the Gambia that lead to the market glut and that have lead to the post harvest loss. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member, for for your benefit. The issue of um, transboundary trade. I'll advise the Honorable Member to redirect her question to the Ministry of Trade and Regional Integration. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Members, and thank you, Honorable Minister of Agriculture. Let me thank you very much for ably answering questions posed by Honorable Members. Honorable Members, I must apologize. Uh, a lot of people were looking at me in my eyes. And uh, we were just trying to deal with the Agricultural Ministry. Uh, we now propose to suspend the sitting for about an hour for people to have their lunch and uh, other issues. But let's please try to come back at agreed time so that we don't stay here longer than necessary. It's already gone almost 2019 after four. Can we agree that in the next one hour, let's say by half past five, we are all back here? Agreed. Is that comfortable to all members? Agreed. Half past five. Please, let's try by all means, let's be here so that by half past five we start. The assembly now stands suspended until half past five prompt. Thank you.